I'd like to give a few thoughts and conjecture on um, uh, DNA, the um, body of Moses, which will link into the identification of the two prophets uh, in the Great Tribulation period, and just some thoughts about um, the Jews that aren't Jews and who are they and where where they are today. Um, I don't want to be um, incite any anti-Semitism or any wicked behaviour, any evil behaviour. I simply believe, uh, you know, render good to those who render evil to you. So, um, I'd be very careful of uh, pointing the finger. So this is just conjecture and some thoughts regarding the synagogue of Satan really and the people behind the Jews who cause the Jews a lot of problems and uh, stir up the Jews and use the Jews um, to create anti-Semitism rather than support the real heart and soul of um, what's in the Jews' uh, inheritance and lives by their, uh, by their good works. But there are, you know, like all people, there's good and bad people. So it's not to incite anti-Semitism, but to, you know, um, any, any people who've broke the law um, and done wrong and done criminal actions, well, that's up to the law to uh, deal with those people. I'm simply um, non-partisan. Um, I'm just passing through this world. I'm not, I don't want to get wrapped up in the cares of the world so much, but rather just share some thoughts on on these areas. Um, I've got, um, here's a scripture about um, the death of Moses um, and it, that can be, it's recorded, it's mentioned in Numbers um, and I believe it's mentioned in Exodus but this is from rec a record of uh, Deuteronomy. And I want to give some thoughts about the um, Babylonian Talmud and um, it's not something I read, I know some things about it and I know there's two vari variations of the Talmud and the, the, the tradition of the rabbis or the uh, Jewish rabbis uh, kept their re recordings in the Babylonian Talmud so there's a lot of accurate history and uh, wisdom but there's also a lot of corruption it's an apostate, wicked book, and um, so I want to give some thoughts about that as well. Uh, the death of Moses was recorded in um, Deuteronomy chapter 34, and um, not long after the Song of Moses was given about the falling away of the, once the, the, the seed of Israel entered into the uh, promised land, Moses prophesied about the falling away and apostasy of the Jewish people and how that would bring curses and um, that has carried on and, and to date that is um, still active the, the Jews have um, got their eyes closed and their ears shut which was God's will um, so we're looking at um, the death of Moses and, cons and some conjecture on, I want to give some conjecture and some thoughts on about this subject. And Moses went up from, this is Deuteronomy chapter 34, and Moses went up from the plains of Moab unto the mountain of Nebo, to the top of Pisgah, that is over against Jericho. And the Lord showed him all the land of Gilead, unto Dan, and all the Naphtali, Naphtali, and the land of Ephraim, and Manasseh and all the land of Judah upon the utmost sea and the south and the plain of the valley of Jericho the city of palm trees unto Zor so Moses could, uh, up on this height could see the seed of Israel um, when Joshua led them into the promised land across the Jordan and the Lord parted the river so they could pass over and, they, and the Lord had prepared the sea to enter into into the land and I believe they, that's when they uh, captured Jericho and that was when the um, the work began through the people to um, claim their inheritance, the promised land, 
flown with milk and honey. And south of the plain of the valley of Jericho in the city of palm trees unto Zor, the Lord said unto him, This is the land which I swear unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, saying, I will give it unto thee, thy seed. I have caused thee to see it, and thine eyes, but thou shalt not go over thither. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. And he buried him in a valley in the land of Moab, over against Beth Puah. But no man knoweth of his sepulchre unto this day. So I just want to stop there. So um, now there's no nobody really knows who the two witnesses will be that are mentioned in the book of Zechariah, the two lampstands providing oil, um, and the two witnesses of Revelation who um, judge the world and and do mighty miracles for the glory of God. And that's recorded in the book of Revelation, the two, the two witnesses. And there's a lot of um, opinion and conjecture, but there's no definite way of knowing. But, but it appears to be uh, the, the most popular common uh, opinion is that it will be Moses and Elijah. Um, so on that basis, and this is complete conjecture, I just want to consider, well if it is Moses, Moses' bones are in the land of Moab over against Beth Poor, but no man knoweth of his sepulchre unto this day. So the Lord buried Moses, now Moses uh, offended the Lord and, and, and uh, sinned, and uh, the Lord punished him and he died, and, up on, and the Lord buried him at that place. So if the two witnesses, one of them is Moses, then perhaps the Lord would resurrect Moses and he would have a record of his inheritance in his, in his bones, in his DNA. So any, any wicked people like, like Hitler and the Third Reich went looking for all the Ark of the Covenant and the spear that pierced Christ for power and their, their vain ambitions that if, if people go looking for the bones of Moses to conceal, and this is where my conjecture is coming in, to conceal the truth about the inheritance of that bloodline because it would contain the but Moses' bones would contain the DNA and prove, prove the lineage of the, that bloodline on earth today. Um, so if Moses is uh, resurrected in that spot, comes out of the ground, out of the grave, he will have a witness of of the true of bloodlines because he'll be able to just from sign uh, by divine inspiration and by his physical evidence he could lawfully prove uh, who's who from that um, from his DNA record which would be the Y the Y gene not the uh, I think it's called hypochondrial DNA which is from the mother side and to get into I think Jerusalem today lawfully. I think you've got to prove you have a Jewish grandparent, but, um, but DNA is usually tested on the mother's side rather than the father's line, which is contradictory to the Bible, because it's the father to son, the blood inheritance, father to son, the Y, the y gene. So if Moses was to do a Y gene test, that would um, clarify who's who. Now my my um, conjecture is the Jews that aren't Jews have taken the place of a certain bloodline, not perhaps not completely, but they are disguised among their identity. So they're claiming in in the stead using lies and full science to show that they are related from this bloodlines among the real people of that inheritance, and the, and the real people have been persecuted and targeted and killed and to conceal the, their identity hiding amongst the real genuine seed of Israel. Uh, so I'm not going to point the finger and say oh, it's that group or it's that group because I simply don't know. This is just um, just consideration and, and like I say it's conjecture. Um, but I believe um, that the powers like the, the, the dominant world powers, the uh, 
and, and, and a big component of that will be the Roman Catholic Church and the secret orders in their in their system and their uh, and considering their past um, actions in in history and their sponsoring of these um, nefarious activities and persecutions assassinations and killing people as heretics and uh, to conceal the truth um, to uh, target the real bloodlines because I, I personally believe that the, the Roman the Roman uh, Empire had a record of the the real bloodlines and they've cons they've kept them for themselves and been able to trace the true bloodlines and persecute them from a distance from secret and um, this is evident in the Bible in the New Testament and it's also um, evident in secular history because uh, the Roman Empire ransacked uh, Israel um, I think in 1990 AD around that time and um, completely tore down the temple stone by stone and left it left it absolutely left Jerusalem desolate and renamed the renamed uh, Jerusalem Palestine or renamed Israel Palestine which continued in history uh, to be the name of that land, but actually the name of the land is Israel, or the land of Canaan, Canaan, which was given to uh, the, the promised seed, the promised seed of Isaac, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and all their children. So it's their land, it's Israel, so I'm not anti-Semitism, I'm not anti-Israel today. Uh, they have a right to be an independent nation. Now what they practice in that nation is, is their business, but um, like I say, if they break the law, let the law deal with the lawbreakers. Um, I'm non-partisan to, um, I'm a born-again Christian, so I'm passing through through uh, this world. I'm waiting for the Lord Jesus Christ to return. And I want to give some thoughts on uh, the Babylonian Talmud and the absolute disgusting beliefs that it holds to, and some of the people, some of the groups in... Israel that hold to some really awful doctrines. Um, uh, there's a group, um, Chabab Lubavitch is the name of a group and I heard a really frightening, terrible, terrible um, beliefs that they held to. So any, any um, good believing Bible, God-fearing Bible um, Torah believing Jew, I just uh, encourage those people to uh, defend this um, heresy. But they believe that it was uh, justified to kill Goyan baby, Goyan babies, and test on them. So I'd like I'd, I, it, it begs the question: Well, if these people have um, come from places around the world and and returned to Israel, what have they been doing if they hold to that belief? Uh, you know, they could get jobs as midwives and uh, start persecuting Goyan baby or justifying. There's some there's some Jewish sects that um, justify the sodom sodomy of young children, especially infants, and they don't they don't see anything wrong in it. These people are reprobate completely. So the Babylonian Talmud, I wouldn't w wouldn't dare wipe her, I wouldn't even wipe her Goyan baby's bottom with it, it's it's a disgusting book and I, 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 re, I just refute its uh, legitimacy, it's not it's nothing to do with the, the, the Torah or the traditional Tanakh that the that we have preserved in the Holy Word. Now when, um, here's a point, when when the, um, if we go to Zechariah, when, when the prophecy was fulfilled in Zechariah and the Jews were cut themselves off from their covenant and the Lord renewed, restored their covenant but because they remained in unbelief they remained cut off they cut themselves off so the, although they're the promised seed they are branches cut off from the main, the main trunk and the main root and the root is Jesus Christ because they rejected Jesus Christ they're without root so they're dead sticks and they need to be grafted in in the uh, prophecy of Zechariah 
it clarifies, and in the Song of Moses, it's all in Deuteronomy, it's also another testament of, of what I'm saying is to be true, because the Word of God is faithful. God is faithful. Uh, the, um, you know, let God be true and let, let those who are untrue be, be shown as such. And these uh, people who hold to the Babylonian Talmud are untrue. And they are diverse as any group, and it's a... It, it's a it's a double-edged sword in the sense that it divides. It doesn't teach the same thing. It's got it's it's down to the interpretation of the people who are in authority that to say what it what it means, because a lot of Jews will respect the rabbinical teachings. Now the uh, Jews lost the right to hold the word. The word was passed on to the Christian body and um, the Christian Church. And I will give some thoughts on that in a, in, in a second. Just going to find the um, prophecy uh, chapter uh, Zechariah, which was a Jewish prophet called called to give the word of God by the, the inspiration of God, the pure inspiration of God. Um, verse seventeen: Woe to the idle shepherd that leaveth the flock; the sword shall be upon his arm. No, that's not it. Um, Zechariah 13.7 Awake, O sword, against my shepherd and against the man that is my fellow, saith the Lord of, the ho of hosts. Smite the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered, and I will turn my hand upon the little ones. So that prophecy was fulfilled when Jesus Christ laid his life down. That, that, that is uh, the word of God, stating that he would smite himself, he would smite the shepherd, the shepherd being the good shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> There's also more of the prophecy in um, about bands and beauty and bands, and, that, and and I believe that's referring to um, Judas Iscariot and the Lord Jesus Christ and how the covenant was uh, because Jesus was betrayed and uh, smote the smote himself, laid down his life. God smote his son and laid down his life. Willing, Jesus laid down his life willingly. That, that cut the um, the relationship off between the Jewish people and the Word of God. And then the Word of God went forth from uh, the Apostles out of Jerusalem. And then the Apostle Paul was called to commission to teach the Word to the Jews and the Gentiles. But he was called to preach to the Gentiles. And uh, the word and the authority of, of the holding of the word, which was once in, solely for the Isra Israelites, the Jews, was passed on to the faithful Jews who accepted their Messiah. And that went on through the uh, Christian history, uh, the church history, not, not, not the, the Christianity from Constantine. That is the uh, Roman powers uh, putting on the cloak of Christianity to, to undermine and persecute the real Christians and to persecute the real Jews. Um, so throughout the, the Dark Ages the uh, Roman Catholic powers dominated what Christianity was and, and they held they held the um, they held the scriptures. So from the Ref Reformation uh, many people tried to um, bring the scriptures to the public, to bring the scriptures, the word of God, to the public people so that each person could have a copy. And there's many um, attempts. Uh, John w w Wycliffe um, had a go. Um, William Tyndale, a hundred years after John Wycliffe, um, succeeded in getting loads of um, translations of the Bible and, and, and it, it, he was, uh, he's known as the father of the English Bible So and, and I believe it's about 75% of his work was um, in the, the final authority of the King James Holy Bible and he was um, killed and martyred as a heretic by the Roman Catholic powers for his work, what he was trying to do and in England he, he sought permission but it was being uh, deemed illegal by a Bishop Tunstall I believe who actually burned copies in, in St Paul's Cathedral and so uh, William Tyndale they burnt him they caught um, 
somebody befriended him and, and turned out to be a traitor and handed him over to the, the Roman Catholic authorities and, the, and who were dominating all the bishops and all over the world they were running and dominating what Christianity was in a state um, a state uh, organized powerful system and they dominated the middle eight, uh, the dark ages or for centuries and they were completely reprobate sodomites and just despicable a despicable wicked wicked bunch and band of people and so William Tyndale was a burnt at the stake and his last cry was um, oh Lord open the eyes of the English king and uh, that must have touched uh, King James's heart and he commissioned the faithful translation of the Word of God into English so he could give it to uh, the common man so they could know what the Word of God was rather than the corrupt heretical Roman Catholic Church who held to that the only way to salvation is through the Catholic Church whereas the Bible is completely counter to that, it's faith alone in Christ alone and that's what the Reformation was about uh, that, that, um, that doctrine, that simplicity of Christ whereas the Roman Catholic Church put through Christ out and, and wanted to dominate and be the uh, sole advocate between people and God you had to go through the authorities of the Catholic dominance so the Reformation was to uh, bring the truth to the common man and thank God we have the King James Bible and so the Word of God and the authority of the Word of God belong to the Christian body not the, not the organized Christian state religious bodies but the the born-again believer um, so people like King James being born again and uh, Oliver Cromwell also was a born again uh, who fought against these dominant powers and it was that would have aided the coming forth of the um, the uh, King James Bible, which was a uh, faithful. If you read the history, it's a, a very faithful and lawful, authorized translation of the the Greek and the Hebrew text, the Old Testament and the New Testament, because the New Testament was written in Greek. And if you do history, the the apostles had uh, Greek copies even in their day of the. Uh, even of the Old Testament, there was Greek manuscripts translated from Hebrew into Greek. Cause it was a, it was a common. I think the Greek was the common language of the Romans. Uh, but uh, you have to don't take my word for that. I'm just um, just having a guess. I haven't really studied these areas, but um, I know that the original texts were from the uh, the Greek and the Hebrew. And then we have the faithful copy and the authority of God and the authority of the law. So it's lawful. Not only is it lawful, it's actually God, God ordained. It's inspired, and that's why I hold to the King James Bible because of of the authority of the Word and the authority of the way it came for, came forth legally, because God does things legally and rightly, in, depending on. The environment and if you think of uh, Jeremiah when he brought I think it's his uncle's land it was all done lawfully with witnesses and the, and the witnesses that it was done in front of were illegal they were breaking the law and holding offices of the law but it was done in a lawful court and in a lawful way so God could show it as a witness that it was a lawful proposition and that land was lawfully purchased and lawfully registered so it's a lawful witness against against corruption, just like the King James Bible is a lawful witness against the Roman Catholic dominance and, and all their machinations and their heresy and how they go after Christians and the real Jews. So I wanted to give those thoughts. So I believe that there is a uh, the true seed of the uh, lineage of Judah have been persecuted from birth, but they don't know most people don't know their, their true lineage because they're lost and scattered and there is a possibly a branch that um, that do know but among those branches are concealed these Jews that are not Jews and I think by their fruits you shall know them because I think the majority of Jews that I've encountered are very beautiful people, they're wonderful people and I think a lot of people in Israel are like that but there's certain groups and elements that are 
controversial, and I think the the Chabab, uh, uh, what is it now? I wrote it down. Chabab Lubavitch were possibly either um, uh, one of those groups, or they've been um, impressed by that sort of philosophy, which comes from the uh, Babylonian Talmud, and then. I just want to ask the question to uh, Jews, well then, why aren't you sticking to the original canon of the Tanakh and the Talmud and, and then practicing these heresies like it's just to kill the Goyim? It's co totally contradictory to your to the, 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 uh, the words of the Lord given to Moses, given to the prophets, throughout um, all the books in a the Pentateuch, the uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, of, of Solomon, Song of Solomon, the prophet Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations of Jeremiah, prophet Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. So, the, it, any anyone who holds to the Babylonian Talmud is completely against any of these books, and they don't hold the authority to these books. Uh, th these books are for the the church today because the uh, Christian church is the the God's people on the earth today, the, and then and then the old covenant Jews are still God's people, but they are cut off, and they because of their unbelief and their apostasy. So, if there's any um, faithful Hebrew seed who holds to holds to the original writings of of, of the books that they, they that they had the blessing that their that their bloodlines had the blessing of holding and uh, being being in, in their responsibility and care, I would just exhort those people to um, stand up against this heresy because I, I personally believe those sorts of bands of uh, Jewish people are going to give all the other Jews a very bad name in the eyes of the Gentile nations and this is possibly what's going to cause the prophecies coming forward of the, the whole Gentile nations uh, ganging up against Israel to destroy them because if they hold to these uh, teachings and, and justify that it's okay, they're perfect and holy because of their bloodline, which is complete rubbish because you, you are sinners like everyone else and you need saving, you need grafting into your Messiah. And uh, that Messiah is the Lord Jesus Christ and, and, and he is a byword to m most Jewish people uh, because they've been lied to, they've been deceived and they've been deceived by these world corrupt powers in the Roman Catholic body who persecute Christians and Jews. So uh, I hope that that's considered and measured if that's something you've, if you've come across this video to consider if you fear God. Don't trust what I say, trust, trust his word because it's all revealed in the Old Testament, the Old Covenant books given to your people, given to the seed of Israel. And the, and the faithful seed, uh, there is faithful seed in the Christian body, if you would know it, who have accepted Jesus as their Messiah and they've been grafted back into that vine and, and they testify that that's a certainty and that's a truth. So I'm going to leave those thoughts and those, that conjecture about Moses that perhaps if it is Moses he'll be resurrected and he will be able to prove his lineage. And these, these sons of perdition won't have anywhere to run because when these two witnesses come they're going to have all the evidence, they're going to have the divine inspiration of God they're going to be given all power and all authority over all the elements of this world and nothing will move them until God allows them to be uh, destroyed by the Antichrist now I don't know how that will be done but considering all the technology and all the machinations of these people it could be poisons, it could be satellite technology to destroy them but it won't happen until they've given their witness in the uh, in the account of the the revealing the unveiling of Jesus Christ's will for that that uh, prophecy in that time 
which is in the book of Revelation, revealed, it's a, the revealed word of God. It's a personal revelation of Jesus Christ, of what's going to happen in, the end, in, in that time, a period called Jacob's Trouble, which is also recorded in the prophet Daniel, given, which is a prophecy of the Gentile nations gathering around Israel and how um, time and history would unfold truly because God gave Daniel the, uh, the knowledge and the light and that was recorded in the book of Daniel and in the New Testament we have the book of Revelation which uh, is a perf almost a perfect match, um, identical match and it reveals the future of the na people of Israel, the nation of Israel and how they are going to experience what what has happened before a repeat of history, they're going to be persecuted and all the innocent people, all the good people are going to get caught up in the mass of nations and trampled on by the gentile powers and the evil bodies so if you if you live in Israel or Jerusalem you want to you want to start studying the Roman Catholic Church, the Jesuits and all their, their dirty work throughout history and they are not representations of Jesus Christ they are charlatans and they come in the guise of Christianity so I'd just like to give that testimony and warning and I'll close and um, wish people love wish people to be uh, God fearing and to seek the Lord Jesus Christ if you do not know that he is the Messiah and he's faithful he's on the right hand of God and you can know him and be grafted back into the vine which is your inheritance which is your divine right and I'll close there in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.